Hello, Kingdom Kids! Welcome to Mr. Paul's Kingdom Kids. I am Mr. Paul, and somewhere around this joint is none other than Torso Bob. Yeah, yeah, everyone loves Bob. This is week two of the Jesus Said What study. Last week, we looked at the statement where he simply said, I am. The rest of the lessons will revolve around different things that Jesus said he was. This week is, I am the bread of life. That's right. Stay away from the donut of death or the bagel of broken hearts. Only the bread of life up in here. If Bob were here, I'm sure he'd be reprimanding me soundly for that. Back on track and moving forward with things today, the memory verse! Our memory verse for this entire study is Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. But we're going to do something a little different today rather than simply repeating the verse. The verse, which is Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Right. What I want to get into today is helping you understand the Bible references when you see them. So, for example, if you wanted to find our current memory verse, Hebrews 13.8, where it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, how do you go about breaking down Hebrews 13.8 and finding it in the Bible? Easy, Bob. First, you want to locate the book of the Bible. In this case, Hebrews. Now, there are 66 books in the Bible, so you might want to have some idea of where to start. The Bible is divided into two major sections, where the front part is called the Old Testament, and the back part is called the New Testament. I happen to know Hebrews is in the New Testament, so we can start there. But if you have no idea where to start, your Bible should have a table of contents somewhere near the beginning. You can locate the book there. There's Hebrews. Then find the beginning of the book of Hebrews at that page number. Okay, I'm there. So many numbers here. A few big numbers, a bunch of little numbers. How does the 13 colon 8 after the Hebrews get me where I'm going? Every book is divided into chapters, and each chapter is divided even smaller into verses. So if you want to find Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, the 13 before the colon is the chapter. So go to chapter 13. There. Then the number 8 after the colon is the verse. So you're in chapter 13. Find verse 8. There it is. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. We found it! And you can find any other verse the same way, just like we found Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Right now, I think it would be quite droll if we did a funny skit. Hmm, quite. Good sir, did you hear the latest word? The word on what, Bob? It's that man, Jesus. He's at it again. Oh, yes, Jesus. I heard he fed over 5,000 people just yesterday with five loaves of bread and two fish. I heard the same. But did you hear what he said when people found him today and asked for more? I'm afraid I didn't. He said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said what? He said, I am the bread of life. What do you suppose he means by that? I've never heard of life bread. Neither have I. Do you think it's more like a sourdough or a marble rye? I don't think it's either, because Jesus told the people this bread nourishes the spirit, not the body. So this isn't a real bread then, is it? More of a, well, more of a spiritual bread. 
I guess you could say that. How peculiar. It's very peculiar. And it's driving people away. The McKinsey said they won't follow him anymore. And neither will the Hendersons. Really, such a shame. Why do you say that? Well, our bodies need the nourishment of a good loaf of bread every day. It seems only logical to me we would need spiritual nourishment as well. Really? The spirit needs strength just like the body. Where else would it come from but the bread of life? Chap, do you really believe in this bread of life? I don't know, Bob, but I am eager to hear more of what this Jesus has to say. And now for a moment of silliness with Mr. Paul and Torso Bob. I am really enjoying this study. I am, too. I am looking forward to the rest of it. I amn't surprised to hear that. Pardon? I'm just saying, I amn't surprised you're looking forward to the rest of it. It's really good stuff. Amn't is not a word. What? Sure it is. I just used it in a sentence. I can use fiddly poppergits in a sentence, but that doesn't make it a word. Can you use it in a sentence? Sure. I can't handle all of this fiddly poppergits you're throwing at me. Huh. I guess it really is a word. No, it's... Uh, I was trying to make the point that just because I threw it in a sentence doesn't make it a real word. Well, you used it in a sentence, and I know exactly what you meant by it. It's a word. That's not how it works. Look, what's the contraction for can not? Can't. What's the contraction for will not? Won't. I'd argue it should be willent. But anyways, what's the contraction for did not? Didn't. And am not? Am it? No! Am it is not a word! Well, I amn't going to argue with you about it any longer. <sighs> Imagine walking into McDonald's after church on a Sunday with your family. You check out the Happy Meal toys in the display case. You read the menu board to see what side options are available on the Happy Meal. You step up when it's your turn. And you ask for a Happy Meal with a cheeseburger. Instead of the cashier punching in your order like they would usually do, what if the person on the other side of the counter looks deep into your eyes and says, with all sincerity, I am the cheeseburger of life. How many of you would turn to mom and dad and say, guys, let's go to Arby's today, okay? You probably wouldn't have to say it, honestly. I'd imagine most of your moms and dads would already be dragging you out the door to get away from all that. You might not get to Arby's, but you won't have to stick around to find out why this person calls themselves the cheeseburger of life. We are continuing our series about things Jesus said. Last week, we learned that Jesus called himself I Am, a name that the Israelites associated only with God. It's a bold claim to be sure, but it's a strange one as well. Things only get stranger this week because, just like our oddball McDonald's worker, Jesus is going to refer to himself in the form of food. Today's Jesus quote happened the day after one of his most famous miracles. Jesus took a small boy's lunch, just a little bit of bread and fish, and used it to feed 5,000 people. Not only was every man, woman, and child satisfied with their meal, there were 12 baskets of leftovers collected afterwards. Jesus had their full attention at that point. The people were amazed, and they wanted to see more. Then he says something so strange, many people actually turn away and stop following him. Let's see if we can put together why Jesus calls himself the bread of life. Okay, our scripture going with the lesson today. We've got the book of John, chapter 6. We're going to first do verses 32 to 42. And then we will jump down, same chapter, but verses 60 through 69. Let's see what we got here. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. 
For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whomever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all these he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. At this, the Jews there began to grumble about him, because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I came down from heaven? Jumping, excuse me, jumping ahead. On hearing it, many of his disciples said, This is a hard teaching. Who can accept it? Aware that his disciples were grumbling about this, Jesus said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you, they are full of the Spirit and life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. You do not want to leave too, do you? Jesus asked the twelve, his closest disciples and followers. Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. To fully understand what Jesus is saying, we need to back up a bit. Many years before Jesus walked the earth, the Israelites were living in the wilderness, traveling to a place called the Promised Land. Every morning during this journey, God sent a strange bread-like substance the people called manna. The people collected enough for each day to feed their families, and every morning, they did it all over again. God used that manna to feed their physical health, just as Jesus fed the physical hunger of 5,000 people. Feeding their physical hunger was one thing, but Jesus knew the people had a spiritual hunger as well. Jesus said he is the bread of life because he is the spiritual nourishment that we need. We need spiritual nourishment every day to help us to follow God and do his will. Jesus told the people he wasn't concerned with doing his own will, but the will of God the Father. He wants us to have that same passion for serving God. Only Jesus can give us the spiritual strength we need to serve God. It seems strange that after performing such an amazing miracle, so many people turned away from Jesus. But that's exactly what happened. It wasn't the miracle that turned them away, obviously, but Jesus' proclamation that he is the bread of life. Many of these people just wanted to see another miracle. Many of them knew Jesus not as the Son of God, but as Mary and Joseph's little boy. They had known the family. They had watched him grow up. They had watched him working in the carpentry show with his father. They had played with him as a child. Who was Jesus to say he was the bread of life? Jesus knew not everyone would believe him, but he also knew some wanted to stay. The disciples didn't fully understand who Jesus was yet, but they knew they needed the bread of life. They wanted to do God's will, and they were depending on Jesus to prepare them for that life. This isn't the last time Jesus refers to himself as bread. On the night he was betrayed and handed over to be crucified, he broke bread, gave thanks, and told his disciples, This is my body, which will be broken for you. Every time we take communion, we remember these words of Jesus. Those words echo back to the words we read today, after Jesus fed real bread to 5,000 people. Jesus is the bread of life. If we want to stay spiritually healthy, We will nourish ourselves with this bread every day so that we can serve God. 
We receive the bread of life every time we take communion, but we can also receive it by spending time each day with Jesus. Jesus will give us the strength we need to meet the challenges of each new day. But just like the Israelites out in the wilderness who collected manna each morning, we need to make time for the bread of life daily. When we can take time to read the Bible, to pray, and to ask Jesus to fill us with the bread of life, we will fill our spirit so that we can do the work of the Lord. Jesus is the bread of life. He is the source of our strength. When we eat the bread of life, we will receive the power of Jesus so that we too can do the will of God. Lord, please give us in abundance this bread of life. Just give us all the Jesus we can handle because we need a lot of it and we can never get enough. So please, just daily, deliver us that daily spiritual bread. And may we always seek after it, not just wait for it to come to us, but kids, we can be eagerly waiting for that next chance to get spiritually fed by God, to learn more about who he is and what he has for us and to see his goodness. And as we see it, to get excited about it and to grow closer to him and just grow as Christians day by day by day by day. Amen. I have so many questions right now. Questions and answers with no further drama. Let's hit it. Question number one. What miracle did Jesus perform the day before this story happened? He fed 5,000 people with a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish and somehow had more left at the end than when he started. 12 baskets full of leftovers. Amazing stuff that guy can do. What did the people ask Jesus for? After he got done, what did they say? They asked that they could always have that bread. But they just wanted that physical bread. They wanted to always get that miracle of, well, this food, it came out of nowhere and there was enough for everybody. This is amazing. Whether they thought it was a money-making scheme or just that they didn't have to work for food ever again, that's what they wanted, just more bread. What did Jesus mean when he said he was the bread of life? I'll pause longer on this one. I thought the first two were easy. I'm sure y'all nailed them. So what did Jesus mean when he said he was the bread of life? Yeah, he is bread that feeds the soul. He's not a food. He doesn't come wrapped in a plastic bag at the grocery store. He is the spiritual food. It's what God sent us to feed our souls and give us spiritual growth and health which might just be a little abstract for the youngins to understand. But you, you probably get the gist of it. He, when you say he's good for our spirit and good for our soul, uh, he helps us with our behavior and he helps us to act the way God wants us to act and that sort of thing. So to say he's the bread of life spiritually, that's what he's feeding into, that kind of stuff. What did the disciples say? His closest disciples, the twelve, what did they say after so many people walked away from Jesus after that bread of life statement? What did they say? They were pretty good friends. They said they're not leaving. The other people left, they're not leaving. They basically said, where even would we go? Because... We have heard what you have said. We've seen what you have done. We have come to know, understand, and believe that you truly are God. Why would they leave that? They, they had some understanding. They had been spiritually fed by this bread of life to be able to grow to that point that they didn't want to leave like everybody else. Those 12 were going to stand out from the whole rest of that crowd that said, we don't follow you anymore. I don't like this whole bread of life stuff. They had already been fed on that bread of life, and they got it. So why do we need the bread of life, Jesus, every day? What do you think? Wow.
Why do we need that bread of life? Who is Jesus every day? I think the reason is that no matter how good someone ever gets, no matter how good you are at treating other people right, not cheating on things, and not lying, we can never say that we've made it. We're all the way there. We're perfect. We don't need to be spiritually fed anymore. Every day is an opportunity to ask Jesus to be the bread of life to you and to help you have spiritual growth. And that can come in many forms. Maybe there's something that you just need to be taught. Read your Bible, say some prayers, and he'll reveal something to you. Maybe you need to grow through trials. Sometimes it happens. We have a little hardship, and we grow character for having fought through it and trusted God and grown through the experience. But yeah, that's why we need it every day, because you should never consider yourself done growing. And Mr. Paul believes that for any aspect of your life. It's true of your Christian life and anything else you want to try to do. The second you say, I've arrived, I'm perfect, I am everything, is the moment that you stop growing. Because you're not working to get any better, you think you're already perfect. Always leave room to get better, especially as it pertains to this here, looking for your daily bread of life from Jesus. Ah, oh, gee, the end of another lesson. What a bummer. But take heart, everyone. The end of this lesson means we're just done with two of eight out of this study. Six more to go in this study. Woo! So we'll be back next week, as always, and we will talk about more I am statements that Jesus made. And every week we get to learn a little bit more about that special man, Jesus. All man and all God who came to save our sins. Get to learn more about him again next week. So that's the end of this week. Moving on, I just have to tell you, as always, parents, if you want to view any past lessons or download any materials to supplement this lesson, they can be found at the Cleveland Church website at clevelandvineyard.com. Navigate on out there, click on Ministries in the menu, then Kids slash Youth Ministries in the drop down, then click the curriculum link, and you will be transported to an area with all of the past videos and materials accessible to you. View them at your leisure. Until next time, everybody, peace, love, and we are out of here. This has been a presentation of Busby Productions. Ah!